Meet Mr. and Mrs. Johnson and Mr. and Mrs. Johnson and Jordan and Jamie Johnson. Two beautiful babies born on the very same day. Each baby has a good chance of landing in a good place in life, as long as one of them doesn't lose the zip code lottery. Like one million babies each year, Jamie's been born into a low-income family. And since Jamie's mom lacked access to good prenatal care, Jamie's much smaller than Jordan. And since they won't have access to brain-developing activities found in high-quality child care, low-income children like Jamie will be two times more likely to experience developmental delays. It probably won't surprise you that by their third birthday, Jamie's been exposed to a lot fewer words than Jordan. A whole lot fewer. And I imagine Jamie's fourth birthday won't be much better. By the time they reach kindergarten, Jamie will have already fallen behind Jordan in language and pre-reading skills by 12 to 14 months. And getting to school on a regular basis will be perhaps Jamie's biggest challenge. Unfortunately, a myriad of health, transportation, and housing problems will cause between five and seven and a half million Jamies to be chronically absent this year. But with summer right around the corner, you'd think Jamie would have plenty of time to catch up with Jordan then. Sadly, summer presents new challenges for Jamie, a mountain of challenges. You see, every summer, Jordan's learning will evolve by a month because of access to libraries, field trips, and camps, while Jamie will lose two months of school learning every summer because good habits such as reading haven't been reinforced. By the time they reach third grade, Jamie will be between two and two and a half school years behind Jordan in critical reading skills. And how much more likely is Jamie to drop out than Jordan because he can't read at a third grade level? 13 times more likely, and the results of which are frankly catastrophic. Wait just one minute there, folks. The story doesn't end right there. Fortunately for Jamie and Jordan and all of us, there's a whole lot of folks out there that believe neither luck nor lottery nor zip codes should dictate Jamie's future, who also believe that our schools can't do it alone. Luckily, there are leaders, organizations, and good people out there that are dedicated to believing in a whole lot more. The solution right now is relatively straightforward, if we can commit to four things. Number one, we need to make sure our kids are healthy and ready for school. Number two, we need to ensure they grow up in a word and book enriched environment. Number three, we need to engage them in healthy and educational activities over the summer. Number four, we need to make sure that Jamie attends school every single day. Because at the end of the day, you and I both know that lotteries, zip codes, and plain old dumb luck don't really offer our children's future. We do.
Hey there. You might have noticed, America has a crisis. A broken economy for too many, an eroding democracy, and shrinking opportunities. So how can we deal with all of this? Well, our biggest untapped resource is right in front of us. Surprised? Consider this. When black men graduate from high school with a solid foundation, we go on to solve big problems. We serve our country and earn college degrees in the millions. We build new businesses at a faster rate and contribute more of our income to charity than the average American household. But right now, America is only getting one out of seven black boys proficient in reading by fourth grade and only one in 10 proficient in science by eighth grade. By high school, our country is enrolling only one out of eight young black men in advanced placement classes and only getting one out of three off to college. America can do better. Just imagine the things we can accomplish if all of us have a real opportunity to learn. Our country's future gets a lot brighter. See what's possible. program. Now this is Lakayla. She's three years old. Um, when working with this program, we're here to right, observe. Good. We help her out when she needs it. But for the most part, right, we encourage good. them to this do it themselves. The you can do it. Try again. This is the letter C. Oh, you can do not it. Working. Try again. This is the letter C. There you go. Yeah, I All think, right. I think she is moving so faster than the, the letter computer will go. All right, good. Good job. This is the letter E. Good job. 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 Good job.
the letter W, the letter X, 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 the letter Y, U, I, E, E, the letter Z. Fatima, who's working on time? Are you ready? Hi, Fatima. I have Amore, who's working on synthesis. Hi, Amore. I have Mackenzie, who's working on his states and capitals. Hello, Mackenzie. Okay. And I have Jasmine, who's working on spelling. Say hello. Hello, Jasmine. Give Paul a hand. Give Paul a hand. Now, this is Paul Hamilton. He has been such a great job, and it's been a pleasure working with Paul. And I'm going to present this award to Paul Hamilton. Because he knows all his letters. He knows how to identify his letters. He knows his numbers, shapes. He's been just doing such a terrific job. So I want to present Paul Hamilton with this award. Here you go, Paul. Hold it up. Give me a hand clap. Very good. Job well done. The next award I want to present is to Nicole Jordan. Come on up, Nicole. Give her a hand clap. This is Nicole Jordan. Nicole Jordan has been doing such a terrific job with the Read by Five program. 